I'm Anthony Thaxton. Today on Southern Sketches, we're traveling back in time over 10 years to these vintage programs that I produced in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Now we traveled across the South sketching and painting as we went. I think you're gonna enjoy the subject matter. So stay tuned right now for a vintage encore presentation of Southern Sketches. We're gonna change up things a little bit here today and do a colored pencil sketch on Southern Sketches. It's coming up next. It's time for Southern Sketches with Anthony Thaxton. Today is a very special episode of Southern Sketches to me because we're featuring a photograph that I'm doing a drawing from and the photograph was taken by one of my favorite writers, Eudora Welty. Now Miss Welty is a very well-known, very well-loved Mississippi author, one of the greatest Southern writers uh, anywhere. Eudora Welty lived in Jackson her entire life and I had the privilege of doing some posters with Miss Welty for the Eudora Welty Writer Symposium back when I was 18 and 19 years old. And I got to meet with her and got to see a very warm, kind individual. And she's also a very funny person. But early in her life, Miss Welty, who passed away a few years ago, earlier in her life, Miss Welty took photographs for the WPA. And these old black and white photographs have been collected into a couple of different volumes of books uh, released by the University Press of Mississippi. And one of those photographs is of some girls lifting up their sister to a water fountain there in a park, I believe it was taken in New Orleans. So we're going to do a colored pencil drawing based on this photograph today. I've already kind of cleaned up the sketch here. Had a kind of a messy sketch. Still got some stray lines. We've straightened it up some. Now, we've talked about this being a colored pencil drawing and the first thing you see is us doing watercolor. The purpose of this is, this is uh, just a little cheap watercolor set. Um, and we're not doing anything fancy with the watercolor. We're just trying to get some color in the background as an under painting where we don't have to do everything with watercolor. We're starting it with the uh, everything with colored pencil, just applying some watercolor underneath there and then the colored pencil on top of that. This is a mixed media kind of technique, but we're just calling it a colored pencil drawing but that just makes it where we don't have to do all the colored pencil on top. It saves on the colored pencils, which are kind of expensive. Already you see that the watercolor is starting to disappear. Already you see that we're mixing color together with these colored pencils on top of it. The main thing we want to get out of here out of this particular lesson is that a green dress is not just green. Already you see about four or five different colored pencils that we've used here to create this. Now we're using a dark brown color for the outline. I'm not using black. But look at all those shadows in the photograph and we're creating those through different colors. We have blue, we have gray, we have blue green, and now brown and some light yellow in this dress to create a green dress. See this is a blue dress and we're kind of creating these colors because we're working from an old black and white photograph. I don't know what color these dresses were, but we're just concentrating on lights and darks. This dress in the photograph is pretty bright on this side, so we're going on top, but this gives us a nice color underneath. See when you put a blue color underneath here, and then you do light on top of that, 
once you color, you have these blue areas shining through there and it gives a depth to this picture. See how bright the dress is? It's got some dark shadow areas, but uh, those don't have to be black. Again, we're doing those with browns and blues and grays and we're mixing those together. Now, the, the biggest thing that I want us to remember about this, this particular work of art is that we're concentrating on lights and darks and it really doesn't matter a whole lot about what color it is. Your color can be wrong and be the light, the, the correct value, light or dark, and still make the picture look right. For instance, look at the girl's arm, how dark it is in the shadow area. Well, we're going to not add a dark black or a color like that in there. We're going to use red. And I can hear some people at home right now saying, gosh, she looks sunburned because now we're adding in the orange in with that red and we're letting those mix together. But we're just trying to darken it up to match the shadow area. And if we darken it up with a black, it gets a real muddy kind of look. Now we've got a darker red and we're darkening up these dark areas in the photograph. We could leave it bright, but it won't look right with when we do all of the shading. We keep looking at the photograph. We're not saying, oh, we're just painting or drawing flesh tone. We keep darkening it where we see it dark in the photograph. If you look at the, at the girl's face and underneath her her chin when we see the photograph you see how dark it really is so we're gonna make it that dark with our pencil drawing look at how the orange and the red kind of blended together on the face to give this nice skin tone that we wouldn't have if we just put one color down we're mixing colors there we go see how dark it is up underneath there we need to make it just that dark so we're just looking at lights and darks and the color is gonna kind of take care of itself. Once we get through to a stopping point on these particular areas, we'll come back and smooth that color out with a light color. But already the drawing is starting to come alive. These light, this light paper in the background is also making it look darker. But see how dark this girl's skin is and keep going back to that, we're going to have to make the picture dark. And then it will look right. But until the end, it's not going to look right. One thing about hair, once we start doing this hair, notice also that we're going to use about four or five different colors on the hair. I'm not able to pick up a hair color and color it. I have to use lots of colors. So we used a, a burnt a yellow ochre kind of color, then a burnt umber or a burnt sienna, kind of a reddish brown. Now I'm using a cream color. And all of these together, the cream kind of smooths the hair out, but all of these together create the girl's hair, of which I'm making up the color. I'm just looking at the photograph, but it looks like a blonde headed little girl and then back on top with a dark brown color. Just sculpt it a little bit more. And I never have been too good at cutting hair, but I can draw it, so. Look at the girl on the left and compare her with the girl on the right, how her arms are starting to become sculpted and formed. And these on the right, uh, the two girls there, we're just seeing the underpainting and how dull that looks. And when we start adding these colors and blending them together, looking at our photograph constantly to make it the right darkness, the right value, color after color, and it starts coming alive and jumping out. As an art teacher, I used to have my students do color wheels, and I would make them use red, yellow, and blue to create all the other colors besides black and white, but all of the other colors on the color wheel, and they used to hate doing it, but it showed them how you could mix all these colors together. See how dark the girl's hair is? We're gonna continue darkening that up, but we don't wanna just put, I don't wanna just put a black color. So we're using 
a dark brown and mixing in with some other browns and leaving a little highlight on top. Makes the, makes the drawing interesting when you see all of these different colors. It gives a light to it as well. When you come back in with the cream color, it starts making the drawing glow. Again, compare the girls on the left to the girl on the right and see the difference that, that those little bits of color make and the lights and darks. It makes the, the, the drawing just come alive and jump out and start looking 3D. And I think that's what lights and darks do. It, it gives a, sometimes they call that model drawing uh, because it makes it like a 3D model. So lights and darks. Look at the colors we're using here. Painted it green to start with, but you don't have to stick with that. And in the photograph, it's really some, there are some really bright highlights here on this outfit. So the best thing to do is make those bright there in the picture. This is more of an, see how bright it is there. This is more of an illustration type drawing that's why I'm doing some of the outlines with the dark brown outline. But even with the outlines, I'm using thick and thin lines, um, not outlining every little bit. We're letting some get thin and some thicker, and that gives a little broken color to it. I really like how this drawing is turning out. It's, it's got a nice warm feeling to it, and the photograph looks kind of cold to me. Um, but the, the warm colors and bumping those in, again, I'm concentrating mainly on where the darks are, the darks and lights. And where I see a dark, I don't just say, oh, that's a girl's arm. If it's a real dark arm, I need to make it dark in my picture. Learning how to see. There was a great book that artists all over read, and learning how to see and that that's the key thing if you see it then you can see where your drawing looks like it or doesn't look like it there's a kind of a some sh highlights on the sides of the girl's arms and it's darker in the middle we're coming in and why not bring in a different color there so we've got oranges on the sides and then bringing in a red and a brown on the middle going to leave an area to do a nice strong highlight on her shoulder there just like it is in the picture see how this light color and color the kind of pencils that we're using are kind of chalky kind of are kind of pasty like and you can blend the colors together that's when it starts really but you can still see each individual color I think we're not going to do a whole lot with the background here. The main emphasis here is the three girls in the foreground. Don't you go anywhere. Anthony will be right back with more Southern Sketches. Hi, I'm Anthony Thaxton. I hope you're enjoying these special encore presentations of vintage Southern Sketches programs that I did back over 10 years ago. If you'd like to find out more, see additional programs, find out other offerings that we have and new exciting art releases, visit us at ThaxtonStudios.com. We have lots of interesting artists, we have world-renowned illustrators and painters who are sharing what they know, and I think you'll find some interesting stuff, so be sure and visit our website at VaxtonStudios.com. And now back to the vintage program of Southern Sketches. The colored pencils that we're using are called Prismacolors. Prismacolors can be purchased at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or somewhere like that. Probably won't find them at Walmart or some of the lower end locations. Uh, the color pencils for a set of about 90 of them will be around $100. They're pretty expensive color pencils, but you can color on top of the watercolor. So it gives this nice 
uh, almost china marker kind of feel. It's very strong and you can put watercolor on the paper and then color on top of it. Some movie poster artists like Drew Struzan who did the Star Wars and Indiana Jones posters uses these type of colored pencils on top of paint. Uh, so Prismacolor colored pencils. Uh, great set of colored pencils. Again, we see the hair here is not just one color. And the mistake I see a lot of beginning artists do is to, to say, uh, oh, she's blonde headed. So they will grab a yellow crayon or a cream colored, colored pencil and that's what they do rather than looking to see what it is. Uh, this type of technique I'm using today is a little more challenging because we can't look at the specific colors because it's a black and white photograph, I'm making those up, but that is forcing me to concentrate totally on lights and darks. And the colors kind of uh, work themselves out if I try to do that, even though I think, well, their skin shouldn't be that dark, but if it is in the photograph, then I need to try to do that, or the shoe has a highlight at this particular place. Well, that doesn't mean the rest of the shoe has to be black, it can be a variety of colors, as long as they're dark in the places they need to be dark. So. I like working from black and white because it gives us, uh, gives me a lot of freedom. I can add some color here in these socks and um, I don't have the color dictating to me. All I'm having to worry about is that value. And I can make my picture interesting color wise as long as I'm looking at where the lights and darks are. This photograph was taken in the, taken in the 1930s and two of the girls are barefoot there in the park. And the rest of the drawing is basically doing the same thing that we've done in the first part of it. Looking at the light and dark areas and doing that with color. On the edge of the legs there to give this curved feeling leaving a light edge on that leg. Again, illustration style of outlining. Norman Rockwell or Maxfield Parrish or N.C. Wyeth, some of the illustrators who used to do magazine covers and illustrations would outline a lot of their drawings like this. Um, so kind of a throwback to that era. And again, more of the same, just but this leg on this side of the drawing is, could be in a different light and a different shadow than the other side. I see a lot of student artists who say, they'll look up and say, oh, okay, now I'm gonna draw our nose. And then they look down at the paper and never look back up. But a nose is not a nose. Uh, um, a nose looks different from every angle. A nose looks different from any different times of day, different kinds of lighting, how high you up, how how high you are up looking at it, uh, if the nose is turned to the side and different people's noses. So when you're drawing a nose, you can't just say, I'm drawing a nose. You have to look at what the shapes are on the, and the lights and darks on the paper or the model in front of you or photograph or whatever you're working from. But you've got to learn to look up there and tell your mind, okay, I'm not drawing a foot or a leg here. I'm drawing what I see and then you step back later and look at it and you see where a leg has appeared. I'll get stuck on a drawing and I, I'll, at the end of the day, I'll look back and realize, oh, that's what that was. But when I was in the middle of the drawing, I'm so focused on these shapes and areas, I couldn't even tell what it was at the time. Then you see the whole thing finished and you realize, oh, that was a shadow up under there or that's what's casting that. The girl on the right has some shadows there on her ankles, on her shoulder. The girl on the left didn't, uh, some highlights, some white highlights glowing, and the girl on the left didn't have as many, so the girl on the right in our drawing gets those. And again, we have the fountain there, kind of still making up the color, but just looking where the highlights are. And it really takes very little effort to start making this thing have some form and start looking really good. See the, the rim there and the 
photograph is bright, so we do that bright in our picture and we look for those other highlights. Sometimes it's easier with this kind of color pencil, even though they're really good and can draw on top of each other, it's always easier to do the light colors first and then do the dark around them if you can work that way. And if you try to do the white on top of the dark color, you have to use a lot of the color pencil to kind of grind down and get it strong enough to really show up. But on that watercolored paper, and this is a smooth paper, um, it doesn't have hardly any texture to it so that the colored pencil really can spread out pretty smoothly. But if you do that white colored pencil after you've already done the dark, it's harder to do and it gets muddier. You can have that nice, crisp, clean white highlight if you're looking for that, if you do that before you do the darks around it. Look at this interesting shadow pattern here underneath the bottom. When we finish the base and finish this whole fountain, we'll come back and make the shadows from the girl's feet attached to the shadow so it doesn't look so much like they're floating in midair. At this point, the whole battle is basically won, and it's just cleaning up some areas and finishing it out. I remember doing this drawing and being excited as I was going. I really liked how it was looking, and I thought I'd really kind of have to work hard to mess it up at this point because I got a good feel. The, uh, the, the basic drawing was pretty good, and um, might have a little of the proportions off, and uh, some of the things not totally symmetrical on the on the fountain, but it is uh, structurally it's a pretty good drawing. And then the colored pencils on top of it are able to um, just bring out some of those things. So this was a real fun a fun thing for me to do. I don't do a lot of colored pencil drawings, and and some of the times they don't turn out so good. So I'm not showing you. Obviously, I'm not showing you those on the southern sketches, but I am showing you one that, that, that I did like. And the base of the fountain there, it was hard for me to tell how that looked. I'm just kind of making it up. I'm taking a bluish green color and smoothing out some of this thing in this dress where there's not quite so much texture there. It looks like a flower sack type of dress and just smoothing it out here. So I'm not pressing down real hard, but this this grease pencil type of colored pencil, the Prismacolors that we're using, lets you blend those together. And look at the edge of the fountain there, how we blended those together. You still see the original watercolor color underneath, you still see the blue, you still see the green, but it all blends together and your mind says, oh, that's a green water fountain. This shadow here is blue and gray mixed together. And we'll come back with some dark brown on top of that. But instead of just putting one color down, we mix some colors and have a much more vibrant, interesting drawing. I don't think the proportions of the foot there are exactly correct, but that's okay. Most people won't be comparing it to a photograph if they see the finished work of art. So we're going to just some, suggest some lines in the concrete here. I don't, I don't care about exactly matching out. I'm just going to try to
I'm Anthony Thaxton. Thank you for joining us here on Southern Sketches. We'll see you next time. We hope you've enjoyed today's special encore presentation of a Vintage Southern Sketches program.